In this video, I want to talk about a critical strategy for identifying successful cryptocurrency projects. Because if you can actually master this, then you can likely find profitable cryptocurrencies, you know, right under your nose. Dare I even say 100x gems. So I'm going to talk about that in this video today as a blockchain developer who works with technology on a daily basis and also a crypto holder myself. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory. And on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to master blockchain step by step from start to finish, then head on over to adapt adaptiversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's talk about how you can find profitable cryptocurrency projects, okay? So the key to understand this is actually how to value cryptocurrency projects in the first place. So let me explain what I mean by that. There's all these like, you know, kind of advanced tools and, you know, methods for evaluating assets that belong to other classes, you know, real estate, stock market. You know, for example, with equities, you got analysts who just mine through all this data about a company and their earnings and they crunch a bunch of numbers to try to find out how valuable these things are. They use metrics like, you know, price to earnings ratio, and they're constantly waiting for these quarterly earnings reports to come out so they can, you know, come up with these metrics. So you can kind of do a similar thing in type of blockchain, okay? And, and I would argue in some ways, this is actually better in blockchain because crypto is 24-7 in pretty much every respect, okay? So, and that's what you're expected to, to win in the long run. You know, crypto trades 24-7. You don't have to wait for, you know, exchanges to open and close. And you can actually get real-time feedback and data, like instant feedback on what, you know, earnings are, in blockchain, you don't have to wait for you know quarterly reports to come out. And so I'm gonna talk about that and how you can actually see these real time metrics and how to use them to value cryptocurrency projects with on chain analytics. So what does that mean? Well, the cool thing about blockchain data is it's all public. Every single transaction that happens on a public blockchain is out there for anybody to consume and do with whatever they want to. And so you can take all the transactions that make up a blockchain's public ledger and analyze them. And that's what uh, blockchain analytics is really about. There's multiple different ways you can leverage this information. Some people try to use it to call market tops and bottoms. You might have seen products like, you know, Glassnode uh, with some, you know, sort of top bottom indicators. People try to determine whether like, you know, Bitcoin's in a euphoric state or not, or whether whales are accumulating Bitcoin or selling it off. That's one way to do it. But you can also use blockchain analytics to determine who's actually using certain cryptocurrency projects, whether they're blockchains, whether they're tokens, DeFi applications, whatever, to come up with valuation metrics somewhat similar to like what we have in the stock market, like price to earnings ratios, for example. Now, none of these metrics are perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but there's lots of people who would even say that price to earnings isn't even a perfect metric to use in the stock market either. But in this video, I want to show you how you can use, uh, you know, on-chain analytics to see lots of different metrics that can help you determine how cryptocurrency projects are valued and combine them together to generate insights for yourself. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into some of these metrics that you can use to help value cryptocurrency projects, okay? So the first metric that I really want to talk about is just revenue uh, for cryptocurrency projects in general, because this is going to be the easiest analogy for people to understand are coming from the stock market. Okay. Uh, so it's not like a perfect one to one analogy what's happening in the stock market, you know, revenues paid to blockchains and dApps isn't the exact same thing as earnings with a, with a traditional company. Uh, but it's a good thing to just just get your head around. Okay. So a lot of times these revenue is really just a uh, total fees paid to the projects themselves. So example, you know, Ethereum, a lot of what that's going to be is just the transaction fees that's used to trade tokens, uh, send cryptocurrencies around, you know, trade on a DEX like Uniswap. But you can also see uh, actual decentralized application projects like Uniswap, which is a DEX, it's powered by smart contracts that has fees uh, in and of itself. And so that's actually the fees that Uniswap charges uh, whenever you're trading tokens. They get a cut of that trading fee and it goes back to the token holders. And so that's actually really important for understanding uh, how that cryptocurrency in and of itself should be valued. You can look at the revenue paid and then you can actually compare that with things like the market cap. Okay, so how much are all the crypto, how much are all the coins in existence worth? And you can come up with things like you know, price to sales ratio, which is basically calculated by dividing the fully diluted market cap with that annualized revenue, shows how a project is valued uh, in relation to its revenues. And also it has its own price to earnings ratio metric as well. So basically calculated by dividing the fully diluted market cap with the annualized protocol revenue. This shows how a project is in relation to its protocol revenue. And so if you want to actually look at some of these metrics, I'm looking at tokenterminal.com. This does have a subscription service associated with it, but you can just look at some of these metrics for free. Okay. So the next uh, is TVL, all right? So this is total value locked. This is the amount of uh, cryptocurrency that is uh, kind of like staked in the protocol. Um, that's not totally true because you don't see Ethereum staked here. Um, 
so TVL, like in ex- case of like DeFi applications, they're powered by liquidity pools. So like Uniswap, for example, when you go do a trade on Uniswap uh, and you say, I want to trade, you know, uh, ETH for USDC or something like that. Well, where does the USDC come from when you swap that ETH? Uh, well, it's because there's liquidity pools in the back end where people have essentially parked their tokens, um, their liquidity providers. It's an automated market maker. So when you're a market maker, you just park tokens in there and then you get a cut of these trading fees, um, you know, paid back to you. And so that that's where TVL comes into play. Total value locks. There's $5.46 billion worth of cryptocurrency that's just sort of, you know, staked into the... Um, Uniswap protocol to help the, the thing actually run. And so you can see how TVL is compared, you know, across multiple projects here. It's $5.46 billion for Uniswap. It's $6.45 billion for SushiSwap. So you might look at this, you know, compared to the market caps and say, hey, how, how are these projects valued relative to one another based on this particular metric? And so those are some of the usage statistics that you can see you know, on this table here. And now you can also go up and actually visualize this in graph form. Uh, you can see the total dApps and blockchains based on cumulative protocol revenue over the past 30 days. <laughs> you can see that Ethereum you know, vastly just you know, dwarfs everybody else on this uh, chart here. You can also filter by dApps um, with uh, L2 and basically blockchains as L1 and compare you know, sort of apples to apples here. Ethereum still has the highest fees paid by a large margin when you do it that way. So... I um, mean, yeah, of course, this this uh, has a subscription associated with it. Let's look at some other sites that you can use to look at some of these metrics, you know, just for free. If you want them at a glance, you can look at DeFiPulse.com to look at DeFi applications and you look at their TVL. Again, TVL is not a perfect metric, but um, it's, you know, sort of one, uh, you know, one, one way of I- analyzing things. So another metric that you can look at for free here uh, is uh, total value settled, okay? So this can basically tell you how much value is being settled with the blockchain. So it's not just about transactions. It's not just about the native cryptocurrency. When you look at a blockchain like Ethereum, for example, uh, you know, Ethereum has uh, tokens on top of it, okay? So it's got extra value that it's settling in addition to, um, you know, just its native cryptocurrency. And it's actually settling more value on a daily basis than uh, Bitcoin is, okay? So that can just kind of show you usage statistics of that network compared to you know Bitcoin, okay? And some people might draw an insight from that because Ethereum's lower in market cap relative to Bitcoin uh, on, on almost all these metrics, which might show, you know, maybe a mispricing, which we can talk about here more in a minute, okay? In addition to these, you know, um, metrics that you can use for monetary, you know, look at looking at monetary figures. You can also u- look at other free tools like Etherscan or really any block explorer just to see the network activity. So one really popular metric is the number of active addresses. Okay. So active addresses are, are basically people who are currently using the blockchain within some, you know, recent time period. I think different people calculate it based on different, you know, thresholds and tolerances. But why this metric is important is uh, when people are actually valuing cryptocurrency networks based upon net, uh, Metcalf's law valuations. So what does that say? Well, it basically says that uh, the value of a network is uh, proportional to the square of the number of active participants on the network itself. It comes from valuing telephone networks. It's been applied to uh, tech with you know social networks. Anything that's network effect driven in tech, this model has been used to value those things. And it can also apply to cryptocurrencies themselves. I became aware of this idea uh, with Raul Paul and his pretty in-depth thesis on that. You should definitely go check him out with Real Vision if you haven't already. But the whole idea is that basically... As you see this number going up, that the price of cryptocurrency associated with this, in this case, Ethereum, can go up exponentially as this trends higher. At least that's the correlation that we've seen play out in the past and will likely play out again in the future. Now, there might be some bubbles along the way, some 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 booms and busts, but that general correlation should hold true over time. All right, so let's put this together to see kind of how this works and maybe actually compare some different projects so you can see some possible, uh, you know, valuations and, and mispricing in the market. So, what I'll say about these metrics is you know, none of them are perfect at the end of the day, but they do, they do give you a, a multifaceted picture of essentially the demand for cryptocurrency projects in the first place. And the whole long-term thesis on this channel is as you create uh, you know, technology that has you know demand that makes people want to use it insofar as cryptocurrency is inextricably linked with that project, 
that the value uh, of the people starting to use that project can accrue to the cryptocurrency itself over time. That's consistent with that Metcast law view of things. It seems to play out over the long time horizon. And while it's hard to come down to a like specific dollar amount for, oh, this cryptocurrency should be worth exactly this much, what you can do is potentially see how cryptocurrency projects are valued relative to one another. Maybe like this one's overvalued or this one's undervalued compared to this one based on these metrics. That's one way to do it. Or to say that, hey, this cryptocurrency is undervalued or overvalued relative to its trend of adoption or relative to the trend of the entire crypto market cap and where it's headed. So let's just use an example to kind of go through some of this data. So for example, let's look at Bitcoin versus Ethereum. There's lots of people who think that Ethereum is intrinsically more valuable than the Bitcoin network simply because there's more you can do with it. You know, Bitcoin, you just buy and hold it. Uh, Ethereum, you know, it's got smart contracts. You can do advanced things on it like DeFi, all that type of stuff. Um, people say the gas fees on Ethereum are bad, et cetera, et cetera. But hey, that's also an indication of demand for the Ethereum network. So we don't see this revenue dropping anytime soon. And that problem will get better over time as layer two scaling solutions start to take off. Okay. So anyways, so, so we'll start with the idea that Ethereum could be more valuable than Bitcoin over time, which I think it can be. I don't think it's going to just flip it overnight or anything like that. But let's see if the data actually backs that up based on these valuations. Okay. So you could look at things like, um, you know, uh, Ethereum's statistics versus Bitcoin. So, you know, Ethereum, um, has $1.4 billion of revenue here. <laughs> Bitcoin has $27 million. And now you might say, hey, that's not fair because Bitcoin is really a store of value. It's about holding. It's not about like doing all these transactions. Okay, so let's just say it's just one metric. But you could look at the price to sales ratio <laughs> versus those and see how that plays out. So 31.2x and then 3,932.25x. All right, and you can compare the market caps there and the fully diluted valuations. So that's just one data point, okay? So let's look at uh, other data points. So other data points are like uh, the amount of value that's settled on top of the networks, what we saw a second ago. That Ethereum is eclipsing the Bitcoin's total value settled uh, on, you know, on, a, on a daily basis and also a long-term rolling average uh, by a significant margin here. And so you could like the, that, you could compare the active addresses uh, the active addresses look like they're in a very similar trend if you look at them across, um, you know, a longer time frame. But if you put all these things together, you, basically what you can see is that the data seems to line up with the whole idea that there's more that you can do with Ethereum um, that would cause more people to want to use it over something like Bitcoin. And that is, you know, on this trajectory that can see an increasing rate of adoption compared to Bitcoin and thus have a mispricing long term if you subscribe to a, net, a Metcalf's law. Uh, valuation, which basically means that the more people would use the network, the more valuable it becomes over time, and that value accrues to the cryptocurrency itself in an exponential way. And so while that doesn't come down to an exact dollar value that, you know, Ethereum should be worth this much and Bitcoin should be worth this much, it does give you an idea of how these cryptocurrencies could be valued relative to another, which could lead you to the conclusion that A, either Bitcoin's overvalued uh, relative to ETH or ETH is undervalued relative to Bitcoin. So, that's just one example, right? That's that's not necessarily a perfect analysis, but that's how you can start to use these metrics to start to apply these things yourself. You could do this to compare other types of things. Like, I mean, you, you can compare it across categories like Uniswap versus Ethereum. I, mean, I don't know how useful that is. Um, maybe you want to say Uniswap could outperform ETH based on certain metrics or whatever, but it's probably easier to start off with like comparing some like Uniswap versus SushiSwap, right? Maybe use some of these metrics and you got to use this data, you know, with, with other stuff too, but it's one, you know, useful tool in the tool belt. Okay. You might compare other layer one blockchains like Ethereum versus, you know, Binance Smart Chain, okay. Or something else on here. But these are the tools that you can use to do this to get started. And you might be surprised at what you find. You might be able to find some you know, lucrative opportunities. But at the end of the day, you know, this is not investment advice. I'm not telling you individually which cryptocurrencies to pick based on these metrics. It's not a guarantee of success. It's not financial advice, but these are some tools you can use to get started. All right. So I hope you like this video. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so that more people learn about blockchain. And if you're as fast at this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They like you to be courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I actually become a blockchain master step-by-step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.